line answer is sufficient. God himself paid the price. And Jesus said, I am. I'm a non-vegetarian. 21st century will belong to vegetarian. This cause of death in the world. Better non -vegetarian. If I prove that an apple is better than a mango, that doesn't mean mango is prohibited. I have some problems with this. Man has become an animal. He's more like a lawyer than like a scientist. Foreign is incomplete. There's a misconception. Neither a single verse which is against established. And I challenge Dr. William Campbell. It's a different situation. I will not tempt God. I apologize if I've hurt the feelings of any Christians. It was just a reply to Dr. William Campbell's book. My brother has asked a very complicated question. The answer is very clear. Major minor religion, fraud is prohibited. Ask me a direct question, I'll be too willing to give you a reply. Is milk better or non-milk? If this was not done, life on the earth would have ceased to exist. Then could you please prove it authentically? The word Trinity doesn't exist. It's a CDC baat hai. Smoking is prohibited. That's final. I hope I have answered properly. It's illogical and unfinal. That does not mean Quran is wrong. It has really moved me. can't call all fundamentalists as good or all fundamentalists as bad. Fundamentalism is the strict adherence to orthodox religious beliefs and traditions. Maybe he's referring to an old edition of Oxford Dictionary, I don't blame him. But according to the latest edition of Oxford Dictionary, it says that fundamentalism means strictly adhering to the ancient or fundamental principles or doctrines of any religion, especially Islam. I'm a religious person, but I'm not a fundamentalist in any sense of the word. I'm proud and I'm happy to be a fundamentalist Muslim. These three things I think are important in our own context. Firstly, an interpretation of the scriptures. Apparently the problem seems to be that every religion has a book. Secondly, a dialogue with other opinions, even if you don't agree with those other opinions. Islam allows interpretation of the scriptures and Islam also allows a dialogue. You cannot make any changes in the revelation of God Almighty and in the Sahih Hadith. You cannot make any changes in the Quran or in the Sahih Hadith. But where it comes to Islam, the Sharia law, if the Quran does not mention about that particular problem or if the Sahih Hadith does not mention that particular problem, you have to get an ijma. Istihad. You have to get a common gathering of the learned people and you can pass a new resolution. We can now have the question and answer session. Uh, there are a couple of rules to be observed. The speakers will have to stand up, identify themselves and give the name of their publication. Because I expect a fusillade of questions I think it should be one question per person. The question preferably should be directed to one particular speaker. And as I, as I mentioned before, please be brief and do not try to give the answer to your own question. Uh, that should be left to the four eminent gentlemen who, who, who enlightened us to great detail. So fire away. Yeah. My name is Javed and I am not from any publication. I just happened to read your advertisement in Times of India and I thought I'll spend a good afternoon here. In any case, my question is directed to Mr. Dr. Zakir Naik. But before that, uh, let me, I, do, uh, I want to clarify a point said by Mr. Sahani, who said that uh, Taslima has been quoted wrongly. In any case, if you could uh, see the 31st January 94 Time magazine issue reported by Mr. Fazan Ahmad, there she has said that uh, the sun revolves around the earth. Okay, and uh, I mean, how can we believe such unscientific thing if it is in the Quran? And secondly, she has blamed Islam for the high rate of female infanticide in Bangladesh. I mean, I, I think these are... Is it in the Quran? Can you clarify? 
Brother Javed has posed me two questions. Depends upon the chairperson whether he allows me to answer both or not. I will, I will answer the. He has the beginner's luck, so he, he has asked two questions. In, in future, it won't be permitted. Only one question. Oh. The first question he said was in the Time magazine, which happens to be one of the most authentic magazines in the world. I do agree it was reported on the 31st of January that she said that Quran mentions that the sun revolves around the earth. And if we believe in such teachings, how can we progress? I do agree with the second statement. If we believe in such statements, how will we progress? But regarding the first part of the allegation that the Quran mentions that the sun revolves around the earth, I want proof. Let a producer proof. Where does the Quran say that? What she is referring to, brother, is mainly a verse in the Quran. In Surah Al Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33, which says, That it is Allah who has created the night and the day, the sun and the moon, each one traveling in its own orbit. The same thing is repeated in Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 40. Each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. The Quran does not say that the sun revolves around the earth. The Quran says the sun and the moon, each one traveling in its own orbit. The Arabic word used is yasbhoon, coming from the root word sabaha, describing the motion of a moving body. If you say a man is doing sabaha on the floor, it means he is not standing. It means he is walking or running. If you say a man is doing sabaha in water, it does not mean he is floating. It means he's swimming. Same way if you use the word sabaha for a heavenly body, it means rotating about its own axis. So the Quran mentions the sun and the moon rotate, they travel in a motion that is revolve and they rotate about its own axis. Now again, this verse had put me a little bit doubts because I had passed my ICSE in 1982 from St. Peter's School. And there in geography I learned that the sun did not rotate. The sun revolved, fine, but it was stationary. It did not rotate about its axis. And the Quran mentioned that the sun rotates about its axis. So I was a bit worried. And then I had to do a little bit of research. And then I came to know that according to the recent advances in science and astronomy, we come to know that even the sun rotates about its axis. And to prove it, you can take equipment in the laboratory. And since you can't look at the sun directly, the image of the sun can be put on a tabletop and the sun has got certain holes, like black spots. And those black spots take about 25 days to rotate completely. So in short, the sun takes about 25 days to rotate. So the Quran is not backward, it is more up to date. I want to ask Tasleem Anasreen that who could have written this 1400 years ago that the sun and the moon, that the sun and the moon, each one travel in its own orbit, means revolving and rotating. Ask her. The Quran does not mention at all that the sun rotates or revolves around the earth. That's a misinterpretation. Since the chairman has given me permission regarding the second part of the question, and she has alleged that it is because of Islam that there is such a high rate of infanticide, female infanticide in Bangladesh. She alleged that. I want her to tell me, quote me one verse of the Quran which says that you should kill female children. In fact, according to the BBC report in the program assignment, the title of that small clipping was Let Her Die. A British reporter, Emily Beckenin, she came from UK and she did a survey on female infanticides and India happens to have the maximum number. And according to her, according to her, every day, more than 3,000 fetuses are being aborted on being identified that they are females. 3,000 fetuses in our mother country. And if you multiply this by 365, more than 1 million fetuses on being recognized that they are female are being aborted. Why don't you read it in the headlines, in our papers? Let the papers give it on the front page every day until this female infanticide is stopped. And according to the Tamil Nadu government report, out of the live births of female children, out of 10, 4 are put to death. 4 are put to death. It had to be a Britisher to come and tell us Indians what's the rate of female infanticide in our country. 